So you, 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 you totally questioned the use of uh, in silico methods, and yes. I will be talking about them. Uh, so uh, we will see how they work in our case. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, f generally, as always at the beginning, many thanks to the organizers for the in invitation, and uh, I would like to show you some um, results of our academic in silico platform for new drug discovery. Um, I'm a medicinal chemist, and medicinal, medicinal chemistry Basically, yes, basically it um, consists of, uh, I mean, it, it connects several uh, other disciplines like synthetic organic chemistry, like pharmacology, also design, which includes uh, uh, design in silico. And uh, this is all to develop new pharmaceutical agents, new drugs. And this is a typical drug development process. And in fact, we focus on the uh, heat generation, we do not play with target validation or tar target identification, but uh, once we identify hits, we go further for lead um, uh, optimization. So this is the, our uh, area where we, where we work. And here I um, mm, uh, listed several, uh, several ways to, to find your hits for certain, certain targets. And uh, you, can, you can, for example, start from natural products. You can use high throughput screening like uh, 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 Martin showed us. Uh, a lot of pharmaceutical companies use those technology. A lot of papers just start from uh, uh, having um, hits from our uh, HTS programs. We develop uh, new, new compounds. And uh, unfortunately, academia doesn't have such kind of uh, resources, but we can use instead a virtual screening, which means a very similar way to find heats, not like brute force in high throughput screening, where you, um, where you use uh, certainly experimental methods, but using in silico methods. Uh, you can all, uh, once knowing the structure of your target, you can start from uh, design of your compound uh, inside the binding site, you can also just find out a uh, new, new idea for, for a compound mm, using the knowledge-based approach. You can also repurpose any other existing drug towards the, the new target. Uh, but uh, generally, I will focus on virtual screening, which is a computational technique used in, 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 in drug discovery. Uh, why, and this, uh, this is to search library of small molecules uh, to identify those which are bind to your protein or enzyme, as in case of marching target. So we basically have two, uh, two very important components, libraries of small molecules as well as protein, uh, meaning your target. And in terms of, uh, in terms of libraries of chemical compounds, we have a huge available already chemical space um, there are about 100 million compounds available for purchasing from different vendors, but uh, when we started uh, our, mm, our, uh, our um, project, like um, almost 10, 10 years ago, uh, there were much less compounds available. There, the vendors were not, uh, not as, uh, uh, vendor databases are not as, um, as uh, doesn't have as many compounds. Um, but uh, in terms of targets, there is a, a huge number of human targets. Certainly, they need to be connected to certain disease. Uh, enzymes are really primary targets. There are a lot of them. But we focus on G-protein coupled receptors, and uh, about 30% of existing drugs targets those those uh, receptors. Um, um, in 2012, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was uh, uh, Brian Kobilka and Robert Lefkowitz were awarded uh, uh, for their work in GPCR structures and signal transduction to, uh, through the cell membrane. So this is a uh, very, um, very uh, important fact that, uh, that uh, we uh, now have uh, much more data about structure, structural features of, of those receptors and the signal transduction. So uh, to narrow down the scope, um, we, uh, in, our, in, our, in our work, we focus on the family of serotonin receptors. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter. 
there are a lot of a lot of serotonin receptors. These all are G protein coupled, while one 5-HT3 uh, uh, receptor is an ion channel. Um, coming to the big data also, uh, this is uh, one of the very important thing in, in, in silico uh, research is the access to, to, to reliable data. And uh, fortunately, there is a perfect service collecting data about the G-protein coupled receptors called G GPCRDB which is maintained by University of Copenhagen, by David Gloriam Group, and uh, they constantly collect all the data coming from, from crystals, and there are a lot of different tools, a lot of different data uh, you can use uh, about uh, G-protein coupled receptors, you can produce different diagrams, there is uh, the biggest database about mutagenesis data of all the proteins collected, um, there is a very efficient browser of existing crystal structures and uh, uh, new crystal structures coming, um, coming more and more uh, in the, uh, nowadays are very fast implemented in the, in the database. For those proteins which uh, do not have uh, crystal structures yet, there are available uh, homology models which are developed using the the best uh, mm, technology available at the, uh, uh, up to date. You can also find pharmacophore models, binding site description, you can, you can play with similarity. So this is absolutely huge, uh, huge uh, uh, like, a, like an online software for, for G-protein coupled receptors. Uh, so uh, here is the example of one of the diagrams where you can see the aminergic receptors consisting of our, let's call it our, 5-hydroxytryptamine in serotonin receptors. There are also muscarinic, uh, adrenergic, dopaminergic, and histamine receptors. And those depicted with uh, red dots uh, already have uh, crystal structures. So you can you can very easily easily find out uh, uh, a lot of a lot of data about uh, your your GPCRs under study. Uh, here are some other examples of uh, of the diagrams where you can you can see how many how many mm, crystal structures uh, 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 number are growing during the years, different representations. And so, as I said, about uh, 10 years ago, we started our own program of uh, programs of uh, looking for new ligands for, mm, for serotonin receptors. So um, fortunately, they were already uh, available screening databases I mentioned uh, before and uh, um, for uh, they were available for for using in the screening and uh, they were also um, uh, tools like uh, uh, like software available so we have ev in fact everything to build our own own virtual screening programs so here is a is a key key player meaning multi-step virtual screening, which consists of a number of filters you use to screen the um, huge uh, uh, databases of compounds to find, in finally, in docking, for example, uh, those uh, which fits to your, to your target. And then we have, mm, in our also hands, we have the synthetic, synthetic lab and efficient in vitro tests, not as efficient as in case of marching. However, uh, this is also medium throughput screening. And so we built uh, the, the first example of our, uh, of our screening was uh, uh, di directed towards 5-HT7 receptors. And using available data from the literature, our own data from publication and patents, we built our in-house library of 5-HT7 receptor ligands. And using those ligands, we built different filters like similarity filters, like uh, molecular descriptors based on descrip descriptor space uh, from, from, uh, from the ligands, different uh, admetox filters, 3D pharmacophore models, uh, docking as 5 uh, hd receptor was not yet crystallized and it still is not crystallized, we built our own homology models and afterwards uh, mm, post-docking analysis. Uh, and we used the one screening database to get uh, to get uh, hits and to confirm them in vitro, so this is the summary, more or less, 
There are uh, different groups of 557 antagonists, so we uh, divided them on based on, on the structure on several groups and built uh, filters, group-specific filters, as well as the very general filter. And uh, we screened the enamine drug-like subset of compounds, which at uh, the 2009, I think, uh, it, it consisted of almost 700 thousand of, of more than 7,000 uh, compounds. So these are the stages of, uh, of uh, certain filters. And uh, the most uh, important step is at the, at the end, when you still end up with several, like 2,000 compounds, or from this path, like 200 compounds, and then you select, unfortunately due to limited resources, uh, select limited select limited number of compounds for really bi biological evaluation, but um, mm, uh, we did uh, of this first time we did it really manually. We selected uh, uh, 28 compounds, and so here are just uh, snapshots of our filters. So these are pharmacophore models uh, prepared for different groups of compounds for ergolins, apomorphins, tricyclic, psychotropics, or long chain compounds. Uh, here are some snapshots from from docking uh, uh, study, and uh, so here are the structures of all those set of 28 compounds. They look more or less pretty similar, and two of them, those two, we found active in our uh, in our uh, activity assays. So this is the medium activity, like 200 nanomolar is not bad for st as a starting point. These these compounds are, are depicted here. Uh, but we also checked the selectivity towards similar proteins and we found out that unfortunately they are not selective. This is the, the second uh, serotonin receptor, 5-HT1A, uh, has uh, a lot of common, common ligands with 5-HT7. But anyway, on this first example we show that uh, uh, it is uh, really possible to find out new structures uh, for um, developing our own uh, group of ligands. Uh, as a second example, uh, there are so using similar approach uh, using the same the same uh, screening protocol for 587, uh, we generated our own combinatorial library based on the reaction path using a reagent database and the, the, the reaction we we constructed the combinatorial library. And uh, after the screening, we select compounds for the synthesis, and then they went to in vitro tests. Uh, there is also one additional filter, which I think won't have time to mention, but this was uh, uh, a tool meant to help us in, in this selection of compounds for testing, and it, it was based on the uh, description of the docking results. Um, I will mention the, uh, about it uh, uh, here. This is uh, mm, uh, this is uh, mm, based on structural interaction fingerprints, which in fact code um, the uh, the binding mode of your ligand in your target, where different interactions are detected for certain amino acid and uh, your compound. So if there are any any interaction between your compound and your target, you have the one at the beginning, then there is a, a distinction whether this is the contact with the backbone or with the side chain or both, and then there are different types of, of contacts. And for each amino acid in the sequence, you have these nine uh, bit codes for, uh, for interaction. And having this kind of, this kind of description of uh, binding mode of your compound, you can distinguish, you can build your um, model to distinguish between active compounds and inactive compounds, and you can then decide whether your uh, screening compound uh, is potentially active or not. Uh, so uh, coming back to this uh, virtual combinatorial library screening, here is the reaction path, and here are three components. So in fact, compounds consisted of three parts, but the core part in the middle was uh, um, represented only by four substructures and there were a lot of building blocks uh, on the left and on the right. 
Um, so uh, when we collected the building blocks for 26 commercial vendors, there were like 5.5 million compounds, uh, but we then uh, we then narrowed down the space of the uh, building blocks. But anyway, we if we finally, instead of 11 million synthetically available compounds, we end up with uh, half a million compounds in virtual screening library, and then and then we virtual combinatorial library, and then this uh, this whole set of compounds went through our screening multiple uh, virtual screening protocol. Here is a is a stage when we evaluated automatically using the sieved based post-docking ranking active compounds and after the analysis of the results and the building blocks availability also the checking the price and uh, and and the uh, uh, and availability of building blocks we uh, end up in fact with the synthesis of uh, 38 compounds and uh, the most active compound was subnanomolar has subnanomolar affinity and very potent uh, functional activity. So this was very efficient way to enhance the the, the synthetic protocol with uh, first selection of the best compounds to synthesis. So uh, instead of uh, hundreds of compounds, we synthesized very limited library focus library and found uh, uh, immediately very potent potent compound. So another example was to uh, we started different projects using this uh, n uh, this approach, and uh, another target we focused was 556 receptor, which is also very important drug target. But uh, I, I won't uh, say m more details about that. But just to show you the quickly the results, uh, since we already we already show those. Uh, uh, I already showed you these uh, mm <coughs> diagrams. Yeah, I would like only to mention here that uh, also uh, uh, after docking we clustered the compounds and then focused uh, on the diversity of uh, of compounds. So uh, mm, to um, uh, to select uh, most diverse compounds from different clusters. So here are the results where uh, the compounds on the red has uh, uh, have very uh, very uh, high affinity towards 556 receptors and we cut cut off was at the one micromolar and uh, the scale is in, in nanomolar so there were even compounds found in the screening which has which have uh, uh, nanomolar affinity and in the next step uh, which is showed here that after in vitro test we select another compounds from from the screening database which are similar to the heats went again through the screening uh, virtual screening uh, uh, filters and again to the in vitro test so uh, each heat compound was a seed for um, for similarity search and based on on the second results we were able to uh, to select such a group that uh, that have this affinity uh, in that uh, that uh, that have more uh, more examples of of active compounds and here are the results for example here is the compound we used uh, we we found out in the first uh, first screening approach and this is the query we used for searching the similar compounds here are uh, another compounds which were uh, bought in the second in the hit to lead stage and uh, mm, there are a number of compounds which uh, have uh, similar affinity than uh, to our hits unfortunately the the uh, not always uh, the outcome of the of the screening results uh, can be then used in developing your own compounds we found out one why we mm, um, uh, we thought to develop these compounds in our chemistry lab uh, and uh, looking for uh, for synthetic procedures we found a patent application which uh, never was uh, in the title or anywhere uh, in the um, keywords were mentioned that these compounds were in fact found uh, this is this is nice <laughs> i like to cite this because um, 
Uh, it was found that the compounds on the Formula One and the pharmacoactive salts surprisingly have a selective affinity. Um, it occurred that, uh, that the guys uh, found these compounds, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, before us, but um, there were no other data mentioning that these kind of compounds have uh, activity towards 5-HT6. So, in fact, we confirmed, we found a nice group of compounds, but un and we couldn't develop it further in, in uh, our uh, project. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, we develop another gr uh, another another compound from this uh, virtual screening study uh, toward the group of compounds, and and we found pretty nice five uh, thirty six affinity. Uh, we started from ninety one, and we optimized uh, having uh, compounds with two nanomolar activity. Uh, quite nice group, uh, which uh, was developed uh, in in one of our project. Uh, since uh, I'm running out of time, I will. Uh, only show you the another example. This is the, the serotonin transporter inhibitors. Uh, the same story, and also um, many many hits uh, from different group of compounds. It was a very nice study. Uh, uh, instead of using the full protocol, you can also you can also focus on uh, using, for example, only fingerprint based similarity. Uh, um, consensus, where we use different description of the compounds in terms of uh, fingerprint structure, and uh, again, uh, purchasing and testing very limited number of compounds, we, we end up with nice heats, uh, and the structure was pretty, uh, uh, pretty surprising because these compounds uh, have... Uh, uh, they are not basic, and usually, generally, all the ligands of serotonin receptors need to be uh, to have the basic uh, uh, center. Uh, this is the very recent study where we also screened the uh, MQ database of five million compounds towards 5HT1B and 2B. Uh, we focused on selectivity between those two targets, and it occurs that we found hits for to be but unfortunately this approach didn't um, didn't uh, result in finding any 1b activity so to show you that this is not always successful however again i would like to point out that we tested very very limited number of compounds so still this is a very fruitful method to um, to uh, to uh, to to find your your hits for for further development so, uh, in summary, I would like to, 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 to emphasize that the, the facial screening is really a powerful tool for, for heat finding. Um, this is very important to have an access to efficient in vitro test and synthet synthesis. And um, chemical space and biological data uh, are constantly growing, so you need to update your filters. But anyway, this is a uh, um, very, very potent, potent method to uh, let you let you find new group of compounds for your for your drug discovery projects. Uh, would like to mention the contributors. This is a group from our department. Uh, here we have modelers who were involved a lot in in this study. These are a group of, of synthetic chemists, uh, biological screening, and we collaborate uh, that with uh, Faculty of Pharmacy, Jagiellonian University. There is a great group of Pavel Zeidel, and um, the, the, the virtual combinator library was, uh, was prepared in, uh, by, by his team. Um, Tromso University and National Medicine Institute, uh, work to, we work together in, in Polish-Norwegian research project in, in for example, CERT, uh, serotonin transporter. Um, finding, and uh, Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Sorry. Hungarian Academy of Sciences have um, uh, uh, we collaborated with uh, with them in one B two B two B stuff. Um, can you just control end? Uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, but there's there's some f f sources of funding. Uh, majority of funds while we create our academia uh, screening platform came from the uh, Polish Norwegian Research Fund. Uh, and uh, okay. It's here. <laughs> um, yeah, the, 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 platform, uh, the platform was created uh, in the first Norwegian Norwegian project. Um, 556 were, were searched in, in a Prokok program from, from po Innovative uh, Economy program. And uh, the second Norwegian project uh, was, uh, uh, was also developed. We, we also developed uh, a lot of these screening tools. So thank you very, very much for your attention. Well, definitely. What kind of, co of methods did you apply uh, in your post-docking Well, the post-docking analysis was based on the, on the structural fingerprint interaction, meaning this is the, this is the automatic... When, when you describe in terms of fingerprint your interaction with your, with your target, uh, you dock known active compounds in no, and known inactive compounds. And depending on the pattern, which is created for for active compounds and different in, in, uh, uh, and differences between the pattern for active and inactive compounds you can identify the model is trained to recognize the act active compounds so this was the tool for uh, to process uh, yeah well docking itself you use the the program we use the schrodinger stuff Yeah, so generally when we, um, uh, uh, when we only focus on those compounds we bought and we found heat and we limit the activity at one micromolar, it's about 10%. So uh, we thought it is, it is pretty good. However, this is only heat identification. Then you need to decide which group is the best. So you need to check certainly the... the, the mm, uh, property, whether there are any any data, whether well, uh, whether you can expand the, the synthetically those group of compounds and uh, also properties of compounds are, are uh, important. But it all depends. But uh, the most important thing is that that you that you can work on something. So in fact, virtual screening gives you um, give you uh, uh, well compounds to develop. You can also find them in other other way, but uh, this is one of the one of the possibility. Okay, thank you. So another in silico lecture about modeling of ribonucleic acid ligand interactions. And the first question actually is why should we care about such interactions? So the best answer to this question is probably because of our scientific curiosity. But there is another answer equally good probably to this question because many RNAs are or can be medically relevant as a drug target. We all know bacterial ribosome, which is a target for many antibiotics, but there are another targets which can be uh, targets for new drugs. One of them are bacterial riboswitches, or riboswitches, uh, which are uh, regulatory segments of mRNA, which can bind, uh, which can bind small molecules, and as a response to, to the changing concentration of small, small molecules ligands, they can change the structure and th this way modulate the transcription and translation process. And the very important fact here is that these riboswitches uh, are common in bacteria and rarely occur in eukaryotes, 
And this fact makes them very interesting target as a potential antibacterial, uh, for potentially antibacterial compounds. And this is not only a theory. There are several examples of, of this mechanism. One of them is uh, FMN rib uh, riboswitch, which is a target of a uh, well-known roseoflavin compound, which is antibacterial compound. And it had been shown that uh, the mechanism of action of this compound is uh, inhibit inhibition of FMN riboswitch. And uh, it was confirmed in many experiments. And also scientists at Merck's Merck explored further this, this subject. And they found a compound called ribosyl C uh, in phenotypic screen. And they discovered that its antibacterial mechanism of action is also because of inhibition of FMN riboswitch. And then co they confirmed this not only in vitro, but also in vivo. In experience in mice. So they proved that this is a uh, well-validated target for small molecule compounds. This compound is selective. Uh, and yeah, probably they work further on exploring this subject. But not only riboswitches, there are other RNA structures like viral RNA. For example, HIV-1 tar RNA. It, it is known that some ligands can disrupt RNA's interaction with that protein. This can be, uh, can be one of poten potential target for antiviral drugs. So <coughs> if you look at the plot uh, Andre showed before, it is somehow rephrased plot showing uh, targets for small molecule, mo molecule drugs, we'll see that most of targets are proteins. And this path is also followed by development of bioinformatic tools for computer-aided drug design. Most of tools are developed with protein in mind. Uh, so, as we could see before that RNA can be a good target for small molecule drugs, we also focus on development of tools for support of, of development of such drugs. And how can we predict a uh, structure of uh, complex of small molecules with macro macromolecules? Most widely used uh, uh, tool for that is molecular docking, so we have small molecule a uh, macromolecule, for example, protein or RNA, we perform, perform molecular docking, and docking program finds solution of possible uh, um, complex structure, and we get the score, and we assume, we believe that the, the complex with the best score is the one we will observe in nature. Uh, and as I said, the most of, of, uh, of such programs and approaches are developed uh, with proteins in mind, but there are some uh, programs which was either uh, adopted from the protein uh, branch or developed entirely for RNA. There are some docking programs. Most of them are designed initially for proteins, but, but also may be used for RNA. And there are some scoring function, scoring function which may be applied later after docking to select best, best poses of, of the com in the complex. And there are several, several scoring function designed especially for, uh, for RNA, small molecules ligand uh, scoring. So one of the first are dra is drug score RNA, which is <coughs> knowledge-based scoring function, which means that uh, it's based on the statistical data of solved uh, structures. And it is, there is a full, a full atom representation for both interacting partners. And what is taken into account is only the distance between atoms of ligand and RNA. And in our lab laboratory, uh, previously it had been uh, developed a slightly enhanced version of such potential. It works in a similar way, but uh, it, uh, more data is taken into account for uh, not only distance, but also angle between atoms. So this made this scoring function m is more accurate th than the previous one. And now we are working on, uh, on the new scoring function, which will be more accurate. And here approach is slightly different. We also use the, uh, this is also a knowledge base uh, scoring function. We use the uh, structures of, uh, of uh, solved structures to develop this potential, but we use uh, reduce representation for, for both interacting partners. 
For RNA, we use uh, coarse grain representation, which is used also in SIMRNA. You probably talk already with Michał Boniecki, who is now the main developer of SIMRNA program. Uh, so we use this representation. And for Ligon, we also use coarse gr uh, grain representation. We uh, tested several approaches, what representation used for ligand. We finally end up with uh, pharmacophoric representation. This was also shown in the previous talk. Uh, this is a concept well known from the medicinal chemistry, by it, but here we use it to represent the small molecule uh, ligand. So what we did, we uh, collected data from the PDB database and collected not only distance and ang angle as it was uh, in case of previous pre previously showed uh, potential, but we uh, gather more information about the contacts. So not only distance and various angles, but also uh, uh, information about the, for example, molecular context of uh, uh, of the uh, of the uh, interaction. So we gather a big number of big data, big, big large amount of data, and then use machine learning approach to find if there are any patterns in, in this data. We use both classical machine learning uh, approaches and deep learning, and we develop models which we believe uh, describe well the interaction between RNA and ligand. So to show you how it works, uh, we perform many benchmark experiments. One of them is shown here. So we took the crystal structures, which are, which are well, cr experimentally solved uh, structures of RNA with small molecules. Then we took out the ligand and asked the docking program to generate 1,000 poses, and then asked two scoring functions uh, to show us the most uh, probable uh, pose of the ligand. We use RDOC scoring function and our scoring function, provisionally, provisionally called Santiago. So the first example, relatively, e uh, relatively easy one. We have a rigid, uh, rigid uh, ligand. So uh, yeah, here the, the red one is the native one, the, the reference structure of the ligand, and the green one is the uh, pose chosen by the scoring function, which uh, the scoring function found the, the best solution. And RMSD is a distance between the between two structures, the lower the better. So in case of RDOC, we can see that uh, the RMSD is quite good, 0 0.6, but our, our approach is slightly better, 0 0.32. Angstroms. Slightly more complicated uh, example, more flexible mo molecule, RDOC uh, found a solution around three angstroms, and our program uh, found a better solution uh, below one angstrom. Another example, more challenging, we have a very uh, flexible tail in this molecule, RDOC 2.8, our program slightly better, 1.6. And the final example, uh, very challenging, and we have a, a very flexible aliphatic chain. Uh, best score from Erdog find five angstroms. Another chance for Erdog, best in top three scored uh, poses, 4.8. And two solutions from our program, uh, 1.7. And if we add a method called, uh, called clustering, the post-processing method, we can go uh, even lower, 1.5. And what we are work working on now is a, a flexible modeling of, uh, of such interaction because during docking we kept the uh, receptor rigid, only the, only, uh, only the small molecule was flexible, but uh, here we are working on uh, fully flexible modeling of such, uh, of such complexes. And uh, acknowledgements. We, mm -hmm. I would like to thank funding sources for our projects, and of course you for your attention. Thank you.
results. You will have the full cluster of uh, similar structure, which is uh, also uh, quite similar, no, it can be similar to the, to the matrix, but uh, then you will be linking the, the, the best score on in the cluster of nine, nine further results. Yeah, that's true. That, that is only part of, of benchmark I showed. We perform many other uh, kinds of benchmark and, and scoring of these scoring results, like for example with clustering or with taking like top three solution, top five solutions. So this is only part of. Pardon? No? Not always, but <laughs> but in many cases, most cases probably. Small molecule RNA, small molecule, yeah. Not, no, 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 no problem in this case. Okay. Any other questions? If not, thank you. This is the last thematic uh, session. This wraps up the presentation.